Hello everybody, it's Becky here from The Makeup. How are you all today? It's been quite an eventful day, jam-packed with all kinds of um, preparations, getting ready for another show, getting ready for uh, next month's subscription boxes, and, um, and oh, I had some very exciting things happening this morning, first thing in the morning. Um, when my daughter was leaving the house, she goes to work quite early in the morning, and um, she said, Mum, she rang me actually. <laughs> I was awake at um, quarter past five. But she said, Mum, come downstairs. There's a giant lizard on the floor, and I, I won't pick it up. And I, I had in my images, I had this giant lizard. I thought, oh my God, what's happened? What's happened? So I went downstairs, and uh, in the hallway, there was indeed a lizard. Well, it wasn't actually a lizard, as it turned out, um, but it was tiny. I mean, well, maybe that big, okay? And it was, um, um, well, I put it in a little box and took it upstairs, and I thought, oh, I'll just Google this. What could this be? And at first I thought it was a common um, lizard, but actually turned out to be a great crested newt. And they're really, really rare and protected in the UK. So, um, yeah, apparently you can tell them apart by how many little toes they've got on their front um, front feet. So the newts have got four and lizards have got five, but on the back they've both got five. So um, I've l learned something new all together. And um, so we, we let it free later in, in the pond. I have no idea how it ma ma managed to make its way inside. It was absolutely perfectly unharmed, so I don't think the cat had anything to do with it. But maybe it got stuck to it? No idea. Anyway, that was my excitement of the day. Let's just see who is here today, because we are making this absolutely adorable and cutest ever little bunny fairy. Isn't she just the sweetest with these little um, hoppy bunny ears? And uh, of course, you can also make these little Easter eggs um, from the fairy box. It's all inside the fairy box. Um, and the instructions are on the back of our newsletter in March 2023. And of course, available from our website directly if you want to um, hop onto there. I'm going to do all bunny talk today. Okay, let's have a look who's here today to uh, join us for this live stream here on Facebook. If you're watching this live on the... Oh gosh, I have no idea. Um, is it already... The 14th today uh where are we 14th yes it is the 14th of march if you're watching this live then um i've got some i've got a special treat here for you today but i'm not going to say it it's only for those people who are watching this live on facebook and you have to um, watch very carefully in the comments because um there will be something will be revealed in the comments so apologies to anybody who's watching this later on facebook Sorry, on YouTube, um, you, you, you're not going to know what all of this is about. But just come and watch us on Facebook every uh, Tuesday at half past six, um, directly on our uh, Facebook page. And if you're struggling to find us on pa Facebook, type in themakers.co.uk. Right, we've got Gina here today. Hello, and Diane. Um, hi, are you on yet, please? I am on, yes. Um, Lorna is there. Hello, Lorna, Elaine. Sometimes you have to refresh the page. Uh, Lily is there. Carol is there. Hello. We'll see you tomorrow, Carol. Um, because Carol is coming to a show with me. And um, we've got um, Jane is there. Hello, Jane. Oh, there's the, all the old the old um, uh, crew is back. Um, Heather. Hello, Heather. Hello, Lorna. Did I say that already? Um, at this time in the evening, I, I'm really sorry, but my brain definitely slows down. I'm definitely a morning person. Um, hi Dawn, hi Alison, hi Monica, and um, Alicia of course is there. Hi Katrina. Um, the uh, what does Jane say? The sound is a bit quiet. Oh, I haven't changed anything. I promise you. So maybe you need to turn up your device potentially. I don't know, or maybe I need to shout. No idea. I'm just going to, no, the sound is on full, absolutely full. I can't go any louder at my end. So, um, yes, I, haven't, I don't know what, um, what might be amiss. Anyway, this is the little uh, bunny fairy we're doing. And I'm going to show you her on the overhead um, camera as well, so you can see her a little bit closer up. And I'm going to grab the uh, fairy box, which um, I've got two here today. So I'm going to grab this one. And uh, let's have a look inside. So the fairy boxes, have you noticed something different? Our fairy boxes are now packaged in the um, craft, brown craft box um, boxes because they're a lot sturdier. 
So it's actually really quite nice to have them in in a sturdier box where um, they don't look so tatty because we stuff them so full. So as always, you get <coughs> everything to make the little fairy, including the step-by-step -step instruction. Um, and we have got here, oh, I wonder, um, okay, just bear with me with this. Let me just, um, um, I'm just trying something out. Just bear with me because um no i don't i genuinely don't think i can do anything about the sound um because there's only one camera um one um yeah sorry there's only one um device picking up the sound and it's it's like the same so i'm not entirely sure what um what's going on and as i'm technically completely incompetent I don't know what I'm um, potentially doing wrong. Let's just see what that is. Okay. Uh, a device. Oh, hang on a second. Um, ooh, ha, ha, ha. Okay. Now, which one is which? I'm going to try this. Okay. Can you hear me better now? Just say yes. Please say yes. Can you hear me better now? I've just changed the, um, I think my sound was being picked up by the, ah, okay. Oh my goodness. I'm getting quite proficient at this stuff. <laughs> I, um, oh, excellent. So sorry. I just had to change to a different microphone. Okay. Overhead. It is again. Sorry about this. Right. So we have a little templates here in the back. Um, that's what we normally do with our instructions, but to do the, um, the actual Easter eggs, you will need to look at the back of our newsletter or hop onto our website. Um, so here is what's inside the kit. You get lovely white wool, you get your basic felting needle, you get tiny little eyes, you get your wool felting mat. Um, most importantly, you get the, um, the wire that we will need. I'm pulling that out first now. And I'm leaving the, this lovely color arrangement here nice, nicely tucked away for when I'm ready to do this. Now, I am going to race through this a little bit faster with um, making the um, the head and the arms and the, the legs because otherwise it will just take forever and ever and ever. But um, remember you get that little felting mat um, that you can put together any way round. So um, whether it's that way or that way and in time it will sort of felt together but also this will become the base at the very end. So make sure you make your Easter eggs before you start covering the base up and then fasten the fairy to it okay so let's start at the beginning um, you're going to cut your 45 centimeter of wire which I'm jiggling and wriggling around so you can actually see it into three equal parts as it's 45 centimeters that means 15 centimeters for each body um, part and um, and I'm using the um, instructions on the left hand side where the tape measure measures in centimeters and I'm using my sis scissors naughty me and and then I use the first that I cut as a template for the second one did anybody watch um, me on on sewing street has any is anybody new here from sewing street because that would be really lovely to see if anybody is joining us um, who saw me for the first time on sewing street which I will be honest I haven't had such a good time in a long time if ever on any craft TV I was absolutely gobsmacked what a wonderful lovely warm welcome I have had and um, I want it I want to repeat it all over again next time right so I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, flesh pink um, wool bat here um, you'll be pleased to know that our next fairy is actually um, we're 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 doing um, a much taller fairy next time, and she she has a, a slightly sort of um, brown skin color. She's really beautiful fairy with black hair, and um, and it's of course the iris fairy with um, very bright, colorful petals. It's it's a, quite a lovely contrast with with her features and her hair color. Right, I'm beginning to wrap the wool around the end of the wire. Now, if you're struggling to get the wool to grip into the wire, then use a tiny dab of glue. When you're making the head, you don't have to be so dainty at the end of the wire. But what you do need to do is you need to bend in the wire at the very end so that you trap the wool 
and then you can continue wrapping layers upon layers flat like a ribbon notice that the my the wool stays really nice and flat you don't want to twist it and get a string like look it really really doesn't work so I'm going to add another layer now I'm working to build this head up for about two and a half centimeters and I say it every time notice that I keep the hand that is holding the wire um, quite high up where the head is so that the wool doesn't slip down and then when you've built um, a good um, layer of wire you want to take your felting needle that comes in your kit and you're going to stab into that wool ball initially from the underneath so that you're pushing the fibers up towards the head now we say that our fairies are suitable for beginners and if you've never needle felt it before then what I suggest is instead of straight launching into the project take your little felting mat and practice the stabbing it's in and out in a straight line all the way go all the way around the mat and really get a good handle of it hold on to that needle nice and tight don't hold on to it too close down to the very sharp fragile end and uh, remember to stab in and out in a straight line do not put any curved motion onto your needle or use it to poke we're not poking we're stabbing okay so um, once you've stabbed the wool down and I should be using this as a mat but I've got this big mat here underneath um, then um, you're gonna start adding more layers over the top so two and a half centimeters that's what we're aiming for that's probably about the right measurement now and now continue firming up that little ball shape at the end of the wire so that we can move on to the arms just get it felted down nice and neat mind you don't stop your fingers needle felting um, involves a very sharp needle and if you stop yourself it definitely hurts so be careful look at what you're doing um, don't get distracted and most of all don't do it when you're really tired because that's usually when I stop myself which is entirely possible <laughs> I'm gonna do that tonight um, so yes um, so I'm, I'm heading off to the uh, creative craft show tomorrow which is at the NEC and um, and I've got three weeks back-to-back -back shows happening and just the thought of that is making me slightly um, feeling exhausted already um, it's going to be quite tough, I'm sure of it, but it needs to be done, needs must. And um, please do come and see us if you're heading up to the NEC or down wherever you're um, based. We will be at stand um, E10 and um, I'm pretty certain it's E10, yes, might be E20, can't remember now. Anyway, we'll be there somewhere and um, in the E row and um, I've, um, I've got lots and lots of really lovely big spring display uh, needle felted spring displays with me that are going to be featured in the entrance hall so do, do um, definitely come in and have a look and of course if you are around I believe that we've still got workshop spaces left on Thursday and on Sunday which is very unusual I'm absolutely confident that they will sell out before um, the workshop starts then um, definitely check it out on the website beforehand or on the day of the show you can come to the workshop desk so don't come to our stand we can't take workshop bookings but do go to the workshop desk and you can book um, your space there and uh, we are doing uh, the workshop spaces that were available um, earlier today was the uh, busy Mr. Mole and we are also doing the um, the curly sheep and the bunny is sold out right here we go that's um, the head done now so I'm pretty confident that's about two and a half centimeters um, but of course if you are doing it at home then do measure it and now I'm going to do the arms first so the arms start out exactly like the head it's actually a bit too much wool you can tease the wool a little bit make it wispy M more layers is always better more th more layers but thin layers is better than um, big fat layers and when you wrapped the end sufficiently you also bend the end in and then you wrap more wool around it exactly how you've done this with a head but this time we're working a little bit more da dainty and what's more we're going up the arm to cover the wire so you will have to pull the wire uh, uh, the wool quite tight doing this with every wrap I'm giving it a good old tuck if you want to these um, um, glue pens we absolutely love them just added a very very thin layer of 
glue along the wire and it just helps you for the for the um, wool to keep the tension um, it, it is a clear drying glue we use it all the time absolutely love it um, now you're going only to just before you get to the middle because you're keeping the middle of the wire unwrapped this is how we do the fairies um, and when you get to a wispy bit where you're about to lose your wool just give it wrap a few wraps until it gets established again and then you can go over the other part and um, and add layers so you can go up and down if you wish unless you manage to get the right layer straight away then uh, do this when you get to um, where you need to sever the wool then make sure that you are definitely um, about over the wool arm you can also turn the whole thing around and twist it that makes a really nice neat layer um, and I'm just going to add another little dab of glue here to um, stop the wool from um, coming off at the end of it right that's one arm done now I'm going to repeat that on the other side so the middle part a little bit of that middle part will stay uncovered and I'm going to start out in exactly the same way I'm just going to move my needle before I knock it and break it bend the end in by as little as you can manage maybe sort of a half a centimeter or it might be a little bit more but try not to bend it in too much and then work your way up the wire so it, like I show, showed you earlier you can just twist the wool uh, sorry you can just twist the wire so that the wool grips into um, the, the wire and I'm going to add a bit more glue here and I'm going to short, uh, stop short before I get to that other arm there isn't much of a gap but I do need two arms about the same length now if you look at um, the set of arms and you think oh well this is a bit thinner than this one you can still add layers over the top just always start out um, how you started at the beginning and then just add another layer over the top allow the wool to grip into the wool this time rather than the wire and then when you get to the top I'm going to add a dab of glue here and let the wool grip around that and that should um, keep the arms nice and tight there's no needle felting necessary however if you have sort of like a few wispy bits sticking out you can try and felt them down it's quite hard you have to felt along the wire try not to felt into the wire so best best is to just let leave it as it is and um, and there's your set of arms okay now with a set of legs um, this is done slightly differently but before I get to it I'm just going to fasten the arms onto the uh, wire where the head is and I'm doing this by wrapping the arms around the head wire so this is why we keep the middle bit um, slightly uncovered just a little bit and there we've got our first um, construction of the body um, and now I'm going to see how the legs are done so for the legs you've got there's all this this pink still left so um, you, we, we are usually very generous with our wool now for the white you use a little bit of this white wool and you're going to repeat what you did with the arms but this time you're not going to bend the wire in just yet you're just covering the end of the wire not all the way so it doesn't slip off again if you need to just add a dab of glue to make the wool stick feel free to do that it's not going to affect the look of the leg it will just save you hassle potentially and uh, you're going to wrap this up now all the way to the other end but I'm going to make that a little bit thicker in a minute but I'm just going to work my way all the way to the other end so this time we're not having a gap between the two legs we're actually going all the way across so with the arms we had a little gap this time we're going all the way across to the other end and if you run out of wool and if it looks a little bit uneven at this point don't worry too much about it because um, I'm now going to add more wool over that first layer and I'm doing this so that um, so that I'm starting out at the same point again otherwise you're fighting the wool that you've wrapped underneath you're fighting against it so try and um, always start how you how you started to start with and um, and then add the layers to adjust the, the size of the leg and then go all the way across 
you might be able to do this with one strand or maybe you need to do do it with um, two or three strands and then go all the way across all the way across all the way across until you are at the very end and I've got a little bit of glue on my fingers so I think that will just keep the leg um, nicely covered so that means now that you've got um, a leg cover you've got your arms and your head now we want to give our little um, fairy these lovely uh, little um, colorful little shoes and the stripy legs for this you've got the fairy mix in your uh, wool in, in your fairy box but this is this is um, it, it varies whatever fairy mix you've got you might have different colors you can pick the colors that you want and if you open it up you might be surprised to see more colors you're also using this uh, to color in um, the Easter eggs and you're also needing to use some of this for the wings so just bear that in mind when you pick out certain colors for um, the feet and the the legs um, I'm going to do completely do this randomly um, so now you're going to go at the end of the wire same as you did with the hands and you're bending it in because now we're making the little foot so bend it in and build up a layer for the the toes and then what does help is if you bend the foot in so you know roughly where the foot is and just work your way up the leg a little bit and then you need to tease that wool out into a thinner strand because you're going to give your fairy some stripy legs now like shoelaces going up her legs keep it nice and thin and then when you get to the middle just wind the wool around itself to to finish the end off so now you've got one leg I'm going to show you this all over again with the other leg so you don't need an awful lot of wool so you start out at the very end with that wool now you're going to bend the foot in as you've done with the hands wrap the foot part when that is wrapped bend it in and then that should give you um, a good idea how much further up you need to go before you tease that wool out, out into a really thin strand and then you're going to give your fairy stripy legs on the other side as well okay you're not gonna see um, that much of the legs because she's also wearing a little skirt so I wouldn't worry too much about what it looks like right at the top here but as long as you've got <laughs> a set of legs of here then um, you'll be fine so of course you're gonna bend them in so that you they look a little bit more like um, like legs and then we need to fasten the legs to the fairy by um, allowing a gap from the top of the legs to the bottom of the head uh, the same amount as the head is big so two and a half centimeters and you're winding that um, body wire around the top of the legs twice I mean you can do it more often if you want there's quite a long length le left and um, and then you're going to get rid of the remaining wire and tuck it around and tuck it away around the fairy's middle part you can also cut it this is just so that um, you literally tucking away the the wire now and uh, you've got um, a fairy that looks a little bit like that right now so what we need to do next we need to give her a nice um, body yeah we need to give her the body really and for this we've got that lovely um, pink wool and this time we can work with slightly more generous layers so let's wrap the body up a bit more generously the reason why you've got so much white wool here is because that's the wool you make the Easter eggs from. So it's it's um, it, there's plenty of making a, a nice nest of Easter eggs. So begin wrapping the uh, wool around the middle of the body first, and um, at some point you will go round the the legs as well, so that you cover everything that has got um, that looks like wire. You're going to cover it all. You want to get rid of all of the wire and when you've got a, a layer going here and it's thick enough for you to use your felting needle with then you start stubbing into the wool to firm it up but also to secure it so 
it doesn't matter if the fairy looks slightly out of shape at the moment because there's a lot of work that you are going to put into her still so we've only just started covering her with that pink wool and in a minute I'm just going to um, come up for air say hello to all of you again in case we have have had some new people joining um, but I will also show you that you're going around the shoulders as well so do this as neatly as you can and then tuck the wool away again so that you can felt it down <clears throat> and just use your needle carefully stab past the wire and um, stab from all directions so that the wool gets tucked away and you neaten it up and then you're ready maybe to add another layer over the top so bend the arms out of the way as you wish and I'm going to just have a quick um, look who else is here who else has joined us let's have a look so we've got um, oh goodness me this is all catching up with these comments so I'm gonna try and start um, yes some um, Alicia says um, Carol and I are going to be so busy we need a holiday after all those shows I am actually looking forward to Easter so I can play catch up when everybody's doing nothing I can be busy and catch up so um, yeah well my family know exactly how I look like especially with eyes closed that I can tell you for nothing so um, yes um, I I, uh, co I continuously um, tell my children what an awful mother I am because I'm always tired and they always have to do things for me but I have got a really nice um, hot chocolate here which is not very hot anymore at all but I'm going to have a little sip now mm. delicious how do you drink your hot chocolate I make it from proper 100% chocolate and um, I um, I like oat milk so that's in there and I sweeten it with a tiny bit of honey and I love it it's absolutely perfect um, so Carol says looking forward to meeting everyone at the shows three weeks of fun filled fluffiness well you are just an eternal optimist and always happy Carol I, I need some of that so see if you can rub some off onto me um, as of the next few days Sam says looking forward to seeing you on Friday and I managed to book your workshop whoop whoop that's nice um, I can see a lot of photos coming on um, Katrina has joined she says hello well hello Ellie is there hello the closest show apart from the south of England showground is Weald of Kent followed by Farnborough ah I'm going we're going to Farnborough but I don't think you'll be at those yes we will be at Farnborough we're on the schedule for Farnborough we have two teams in place for that particular show because there is another show that takes place at the same time and so we um, this is this is yeah I might not be with with Carol on this one but Carol will probably head off um, on the show on one of the shows by herself and I will go to Farnborough there you go um, so I'm glad we, we um, sorted that so remember there is a very special um, little something that we've got for um, only those of you who are watching I'm not showing it on the screen you have to look through the comments if you want to find out so please do and um, and hopefully that will help you a little bit to um, get all the things that you want to get from us now we have got some I've got some other things up the sleeve so I'm going to just show you quickly what's happening um, over the next few weeks in terms of live streams we're actually back to um, another box uh, next week which is the surprise box make along for the first time and um, the theme is a pink lamp landscape sorry I'm drinking some more hot chocolate and then the following week on Tuesday the 28th of March we've got our round bunny and our round sheep two projects in one sitting that's going to be quite I think I might have to do a bit of a work ahead thing and then on the following week on the 4th of April we've got our sub box reveal um, and when I uh, when I read sub box reveal I think of squeal because it's little piglets little boar piglets like little humbugs and um, we, we will be making um, I will be showing you those and uh, we've also got um, uh, the new fairy which is the iris fairy and then we've got the surprise box which is whatever the weather 
that's basically it. So um, the other thing we've got new are our newest kits. So make sure you don't miss out. If you're not coming to a show, you're not doing a workshop, you haven't seen it on Sewing Street and you want to get um, some of the kits, then there's our very busy Mr. Mole. He's been in incredibly busy. So many um, um, people have bought him. Our round bunny, perfect for Easter, a very super quick and easy make. We've got the heel and coo and uh, we've got Macmus, so I'm still um, still good at speaking Scottish. So please um, definitely get um, those if you want to have a little bit of um, of fun. Maybe you have a relative who um, have always wanted to make a Highland cow, maybe somewhere abroad, maybe in America. Um, then go go and get the kit for them. And then we've got the toadstool house, the small toadstool house, and the super cute little sheep. Okay, right, talking about sheep, um, our Sean the Sheep kit is in the making. Watch out, don't miss out. The next few um, days um, we will be launching this kit for um, as a pre-order. So you can get it um, fast, basically, get it fast. And um, of course there are two. And I promise you that uh, next week I will have the Shawns and all the accessories with me. It's just they're being um, they're be they're being used at the moment. They're busy helping us get the kit ready, so it will it will come um, with the next um, with the next live stream. Right, let's go to the overhead camera again and continue on our little fairy. Okay, where are we? Right, I'm going to add a little bit more pink onto her just to um, build, make make sort of the, the bottom part here where the legs are a bit neater because it looks a little bit disheveled here. I felt that down. And then I'm going to give her a little bit more uh, upper body bulk as well. So you can take your time. Don't think that you have to rush your fairy. Take your time. It's always good to enjoy and um, and go at your own pace. I know I'm a fast crafter and um, I can fly through these things um, most of the time. But I, I'm not setting a standard here. I'm, I'm literally just doing it so that um, you can, often you can just watch. You don't need to make along. And if you want to rewatch it, you can pause and, um, and catch up do your own thing then continue working along that's the idea um, this is not a making marathon and just add a bit more here I'm add a bit more on the top here as well going around the shoulders again and around the neck if you go around the neck it sort of gives it more of a separate shape between the shoulders and the head so every time you go round I would just pull it quite tight and Felt it down and then I'm going to definitely give her her cute little fluffy um, what's it called again I've forgotten now a skirt oh, tutu skirt that's what I'm looking for a little tutu skirt I mean you don't have to keep it short you can make yours longer if you wish but um, um, for this we're using this beautiful pastel color blue I really like this one and um, you're going to make little little tufts of wool so that you tease them apart so that the fibers are all nicely lined up and then you're going to um, spread them out and you're going to felt them down so in the middle here so that you've got bits coming at the bottom and bits sticking up at the top so felt them down you can make them nice and thin or you can layer them up a bit thicker but in any case, you do need to sort of reach around the fairy a little bit. We're going to put another layer on her back, but uh, we go around as far as we can with that first layer. That's probably going to make her sneeze because she's got woolly, fluffy bits sticking in her face. And then you do the same on the other side. So you use some of this wool as well to give your um, Easter eggs that speckled look. Felt that down as well. and make sure it's felted on really well so make sure you've got a nice um, yeah a nice strict strict line where the wool has been felted down just around her waist 
we always or we often attach uh, skirts quite high up the waist so it's like an upper waist if you like and felt it down and then you're going to turn the fibers that are pointing up you're turning them downwards so that you've now got a nice little neat edge here at the top and of course you can trim um, these fibers shorter that are around her base so you use your fingers to manipulate the skirt you can also stub into the into um, the edge underneath a bit just to secure the um, fibers a bit more and it also makes the skirt more sticky out and then I would say just use your scissors and trim it this is the fun bit I always think you get to cut the wool reminds me of when I was a child cutting my doll's hairs shorter and shorter and shorter until there wasn't much left and it never grew again who's done that before and so um, there you are you've got a nice little um, a little puffy skirt there now and um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the eyes into place oh look does, does she look lovely for this I need the eyes first of all which are in this little uh, paper envelope. These are tiny, tiny three millimeter eyes. Let's get them out. Yeah. And I need my glue, which I've got here. And if you've got an awl, you can use an awl, but if you don't have an awl, um, if you don't have one of these, then use your felting needle. And I'm going to poke a hole. So I'm in the middle line of the, of the head and I'm going to go quite towards the outer edge of the head, only because um, so eyes that are further apart uh, makes often the, the, the gives it a cuter look. So there's one, and I'm going to put another one in there. So you can use your felting needle to do this, but uh, if you have an awl, it's a really good investment, especially these new ones that we have got now. So there's her little eyes all in there, and um, to secure them, you use your glue pen. Just lift the eye off the surface a little bit, but don't let it come out of its channel that you've made. Add a tiny dab of glue, and then um, the eyes will be secure enough. And then you can tease out a little bit of your favorite lipstick from, from this fairy mix. You could use a bit of the very pale pink, but let's just use, let's just give her some bright, bright colored um, lips. Just give it give it a bit of a yeah just squish it a bit in your hands and then felt it down for her little mouth or whatever shape you want to give it maybe she's got a little smiley mouth maybe she's got a little a little um, button mouth mouth whatever you fancy look at that felt it down oh she looks so cute there and she will look completely different once we give her hair and of course she's also going to have bunny ears now with the hair you've got what what we call our fuzzy yarn we really like this for um, a cover on animals but as well as um, creating hair and um, the method that I'm using here I've used many times on other things is basically you wind up um, five to six strands around your wind it around five to six times around your hands fingers even and then you lay the whole bunch onto the side of the head and uh, with all the fairies I'm always saying frame the head first and you felt in the whole thing the loop and all to fit around one side of her head first felt it down make sure you don't have any bare batches there ignore that the, the hair is in loops you repeat that you will need to leave a little bit of the wispy wool because guess what it's um, it's sort of goes inside the nest just to make it nice and cozy for the eggs and then we're going to do the other side so we're always framing the face first felt these down on that side as well so step straight into these wool strands don't be afraid 
they will um, oblige the fuzzy fuzziness of the of the yarn. The needle will catch it and will just pull it inside of um, the head, so you felt it straight onto the head of the fairy. And then, of course, you've got to cover her back as well, the back of the head. So for this, you need another another loop. Got plenty of wool there for um, all kinds of maybe to put in your stash or for other things. Remember the fairy boxes, they do come as a as a subscription, saves you money, or you can buy them as a one-off box. So if you just fancy doing that bunny fairy, you can buy it as a single um, one-off box. If you buy it as a subscription, you can, um, I think you save 20% every month. And we've got a brand new, um, a brand new gift subscription um, package for you now where you can buy any of our subscription boxes as a gift subscription which means you can choose between three six nine or twelve months to treat somebody special maybe yourself this could also work for those people who um, can't actually subscribe because then um, they, they prefer paying via PayPal this will work for those who do who want to pay via PayPal um, we basically we post them out every month it is the current boxes of that month you cannot backdate any of the boxes and um, and and this is a brand new uh, product that we have literally added today to our um, selection now once you've got the hair felted on then you're going to cut open the loops at the bottom so now you do de-looping it so that she's got nice fluffy hair there and if you need to trim it and make it shorter on one side or the other, then you can. Um, you can, of course, always add more to it. Um, so I don't know if I should trim it a bit because we need to get the wings in there as well. So I'm going to give her a slightly shorter hairdo. I was quite generous with those loops. That's just like what I did with my dolls. Cut it off. Ooh, cut a bit more. And a bit more. And a bit more. And then it's all gone. There. So she's now got um, a little hair trim there. This side is a bit longer. This is how it starts, right? This side is a bit longer. Let's cut this. Ooh, this side is a bit... Yeah, now I need to cut the other side. No, I'm not doing that. Okay, so you've got your little fairy now um, with hair and uh, a beautiful dress. And now we need to give her her bunny ears. For the bunny ears, you've got this um, brown wool in there. That's a dyed New Zealand merino. This is our milk chocolate chocolate and um, for for it you tear off um, a pinch of the brown wool a pinch is usually what you sort of can take off in one go by just pinching it basically and then you get another pinch and um, and then this is how we make ears so you've got your pinch of wool here you fold this in half I've got white hair in there and then you fold it in and fold it in so that you've got a nice um, a nice little triangular place uh, um, piece there. And you've got to stub that flat on your mat. Now, you turn this over as quickly as, as soon as you can and you felt the other side. Now watch what I'm doing with the wispy ends. And this is, this is sort of um, using the wispy ends which are staying unfelted. I'm actually going to use them now to shape the ears and this is not written in the instructions because it's hard to explain. So I'm felting this, these ears but as they are gripping into the mat I'm pulling them, make them slightly longer and sh more shapely. So as, they are, as they're in the mat I'm actually pulling quite hard to, um, with, with on, on these loose end fibers and, and that way I'm getting the ear to become slightly more oblong and then I can repeat that on the other side and do it again and in the in at the same time you sort of get that nice shape of the ears with a slightly thicker edge but remember you do have a template here to fit the ears in that's not bad is it yes so that's one ear and then you make a second so fold the wool in half so you have the folded edge at the top bend one side and bend the other side and so you've made a triangle at the top felt that triangle down and then turn it over felt it from the other side just get get it felted down a bit and worry about the shaping in a minute once you've got a, 
um, a shape that doesn't come apart anymore. So then, once you've got that, then you're going to felt it, get it, let it attach to the mat and just start ever so slightly pulling it to make it slightly longer whilst you're still felting it down. And then you can do this from the other side as well. And remember, making two ears the same, that would be the ideal situation. So um, compare the size and the shape of the ears against each other, especially if you made the first one according to the template, you can use the um, first ear as a guide and um, and then we're going to make the head band that fits around the fairy and to do this um, well first of all um, you're going to take a tiny tiny little bit of white wool tiny amounts just a little dusting just like that and gently put that onto the inside of the ear there you do that on the other side as well tiny amount If in any doubt, you then take off a little bit and use less. That's always the suggestion that I make. We often have too much wool. Less is always be is always more. Okay, once that has happened, now you're going to make a very um, rough shape by using um, a, a, the brown wool and taking another pinch. And what you're trying to get to is um, you're trying to get to this template shape here on the back. So this is going to be the template here so lengthways it, it will be sort of bent oh can't see bent like that okay so what I'm doing is I'm literally just starting to felt it down a little bit I'm keeping the ends completely wispy lift it off felt it down lift it off felt it down and start making it to fit that template so just stab randomly into the middle part of it you can also turn it around that way get hold of the other side of the wispy ends the idea is that it needs to be um, quite broad because you're going to fold it in half and you're going to trap the ears inside that fold that is what we're trying to get to so that headband um, can be slightly curved it's quite easy to do that by just tucking the fibers in where they need to be tucked in and when, once it's felted down then um, if you've got a five needle felting tool, a clover five needle felting tool, this will help you definitely get the shape down quicker. This is not in the box, in the fairy box. It's a nice to have, it's not a must have. Well, some people would argue with that, but I'm just saying you can use a single needle. And once you've got um, that shape going, um, uh, the remainder of the brown, or not all of it, but there will be brown wool left over, so you've got some for your nest. You are going to felt the ears on like this first so you could actually take a few wispy bits off so it doesn't stick out too much so felt the ears onto that shape first like this and they need to be sort of about one centimeter apart and then you're going to fold that band into half. Okay, so now you are really um, trapping the ears inside that band. Now you will have to work a little bit more um, on the shaping of, of the whole the whole ear um, Alice band, because we want the ears to be slightly pinched at the bottom. So where you, um, you, you stab the needle strategically to make that headband a little bit more um, like a headband so you will step into the top of that headband as well so it actually the flatness of it becomes points the other way so the ears need to be sticking out at the top of the Alice band and it will need to fit over the fairy's head so just keep working on that on that um, um, set of ears that you're making um, you can manipulate the shape and the size of the ears and you can also make sure that they're ever so slightly pinched at the base. If one of them is slightly too short, just give it a tuck, pull, and just work on that shaping of the Alice band, sculpt it as you go along. And you can also occasionally just do a bit of a fitting on the fairy's head, because it needs to sit on her head like this. So you, you can see where, um, where it will go. 
you, if you have too many of these wispy fibers on the side, then te tear some off. And the final shaping of, of the Alice band of the ears will happen once, once the um, ears are on, on the fairy's head. Because you need to now felt this whole thing down onto her head, which um, can potentially be dangerous to your fingers. So start getting it fastened on on the top of the head first. Just make a start somewhere so that the ears are roughly well, they need to be um, symmetrical. Felt it down. So you're now felting flat into the band that um, was was pointing the other way. And then these wispy ends, you have to sort of imagine that they kind of disappear underneath the hair where they sort of tuck in. So just let them fizzle out into the hair like that. And you can still work on the shaping of the ears as you are working on attaching the Alice band still. So that's one side done. That's the other side now. And keep looking at the symmetry of it all. So the Alice band disappears into the hair. Imagine it's sort of tucked. The hair falls over it. It's tucked under. And now work on smoothing it down and making it smaller more dainty and also the ears the ears um, might need a little bit of working on as well getting there it's quite a lot of stabbing so make sure you don't stab yourself or straight into the wire that would also not be good I'm trying to reduce that one ear in size a little bit it looks a little bit larger than the other one but getting there, still there's a lot of um, give in those ears, so I can um, make them a little bit smaller still. Just stabbing into the base of it to pull them down a bit. So I'm making them a little bit more shapely, facing forward, but also trying to make them um, a little bit shorter. Okay, so there's um, our little... Um, fairy with her Alice band. If you want to give her a fringe, this is not too late, especially if you've trimmed her hair. You can use sort of wispy bits you've cut off. Um, you can, of course, also long uh, use long bits and then um, felt them uh, and then cut them short. That's possible too. It's, an, uh, it's absolutely up to you how you want to style, stylize her hair and what design you want to give her for her hair. Um, so so that is the fairy done, um, except for the wings, which I'm going to add in a minute. Um, and you've still got a lot of this hair left, so if you need to add a bit more to uh, cover up more of the Alice band, you can do that too. So there's, um, there's the fairy. Sometimes they get a little bit put out of shape when you manhandle them, so you might have to go over areas of her um, body and her head again, which I'm doing now. Right, um, so the, for the wings, you take um, a bit of this beautiful wool, find a nice, a nice part. Um, so you take a thin strand of the multicolored fairy mix, so it's about 12 centimeters long and one and a half centimeters wide. Let's just get the length first. I would say that's, that's way longer than it needs to be, but I'm going to just split it so that I've got a shorter bit now. Oh, look at those colors. Aren't they lovely? And now I'm going um, so just shorten it a little bit. That's about the measurement. And all you're going to do now is make sure you've got a nice strand so it's even. You're going to fold the ends into the middle like this on both sides like that. So this is the middle. And then you're going to hold the two loops with your hands so that they with your fingers so they don't they don't start pulling in as you step into the center so you're basically almost making a bow step into the middle if you didn't hold onto the loops on the outside on the outer outer edge they will they would just get pulled in um, because the the needle will grab the wool and pull whatever it can but you're giving it um, some resistance there so you've got a little bow here now, and it's that, 
that we are attaching to the back of the fairy so you need to find a gap between the hair and attach the wings so that at the moment they're still in that bow shape and the loops just felt it down onto the, her back and then you can use your scissors and cut open the loops again like you did with the hair and that will mean that you can spread the wings so that they become more like a fan shape like this isn't that lovely look some silk bits in there you can tease them out if you don't want them and um, and that will give her some beautiful wings here on her back get rid of that hair there that's from the back if they're uneven guess what can make them shorter there trim them a little bit shorter and shorter they go but yes that is basically how you do the wings um, for the for the fairy and then um, the only other thing that I haven't mentioned but I, I am kind of running out of time is that you are co covering this base now with the green wool that you've got in here completely covering it and then you're fastening the fairy to that base now we do have already got um, sorry I'm, I'm still working on her we do already have got a tutorial that shows you how to do this and that was for the toadstool fairy so if you want to watch that again you can um, I don't want to overrun um, massively but um, I'm just gonna have a quick look what else I've got in here that um, I need to talk about oh yes the summer retreat oh no that's the old summer retreat uh, oh that's the workshops oh no um, it's not the old summer retreat we've just got a better photo but I haven't I don't think I've put it in there and I can't scroll up and down what the heck is going on here just bear with me I'm just gonna mess around here a little bit um, why can I not why can I not do this okay I don't know what's happening here okay well you can still book work workshops um, Hang on a second, there's something. Ah, there's my scroller. Okay, I've got it now. Um, so you can still um, get, book your workshops for the Craft for Crafters show. Most of them are sold out. Um, we're only offering five per workshop at the moment because I want to hold some back for the actual show when people come face to face. But if you know that you want to book the workshop, get in touch with us and we can um, sell, you th sell you the space online as well. You just need to literally get in, in touch with us. Um, um, email us um, probably best and um, oh dear what am I doing sorry I hope this isn't affecting you I'm just messing around here now um, yes so anyway um, where's my camera gone ah oh, dear okay need to sort this out sorry right um, <laughs> sorry I'm talking to myself why have I got butterflies here at the back of me that is a question that maybe somebody has already asked or wondered about it's because um, all of our butterfly kits are now back in stock on our website so you can make these beautiful um, different butterflies from ooh, the large blue to the red admiral to the peacock butterfly and where's my pink lady gone there was one floating around ah there it is or um, no it's not a pink lady it's actually a, a tortoiseshell butterfly where did that come from um, yes so anyway these four designs are now available to buy as a kit again if you have made our checkered skipper with uh, the butterfly conservation then maybe you're up for more fun uh, making different butterflies and um, well there's my little fairy you haven't seen her probably facing up this is the one that I've just made this is the one from before they always look slightly different so don't don't think that your fairy has to be a carbon copy of um, what I'm making or if you've made fairies before that they have to look the same they never do and um, other than that um, oh yes um, on Facebook we do have our star system it is only um, for those who think we deserve a little um, a little remuneration give us some stars uh, for our efforts and our uh, time that we spend here um, uh, broadcasting and um, thinking up all kinds of um, live streams and new projects we very much appreciate it if you um, send us some stars and um, I don't think I've got anything else 
that I'm missing. Have I missed anything? Gift subscription boxes. We're going to lots of shows next week. No, this week to the NEC. Next week to the Stitch Festival in London. And the week after, I um, will be in Exeter. And then we're going to take a deep breath. And, um, and then we are um, also going to... Um, uh, Wonderwall. We're going to Wonderwall. Yes. And we will be for the first time. We're going to the Artisan Festival at the Hampton Court Palace. And uh, we're going to meet um, Henry the Eighth, apparently, um, because Carol likes him. And so I'm going to tag along and see if um, she comes back with or without a head. And um, other than that, I hope that uh, you all will have a lovely remainder of the week, that the weather isn't playing too much nonsense with you all, like it has done. And um, I hope that um, you will all tune in next week at half past six on Tuesday onto our Facebook page. But if you're watching this on YouTube at any point right now or in the future, then please do give us the thumbs up. Do this on Facebook anyway. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel because there will be lots and lots of new video um, material uploaded every week, several times on, on some occasions. and. Remember, um, like our page because you, and, and if you want to join our Everyone and Maker Facebook um, group, then do so too because that's where you hear the newest news first. Um, and that's all I've got for you tonight. Um, take care, everybody. Good night, and um, I see you soon. Bye bye.